The Mont Saint-Michel is one of the wonders of the Western world. This frantic scene hasn't changed much since the Middle Ages. Travelers and pilgrims, and all those who prey on them, are still crowding the street. The road to the top is a steep one, and it requires physical and spiritual stamina. But on the way down, this is the place where one finds the earthly pleasures. Every day, this kitchen produces at least 150 omelettes à la mer Poulard. Each omelette is made with a good knob of rich Normandy butter and two eggs per person, plus one for the pan, which are beaten until frothy. This is no ordinary flat French omelette. All that beaten egg turns into a fluffy souffle omelette. Annette Poulard started the restaurant in 1888 and the menu stayed the same until her death in the 1930s. The restaurant has continued to serve omelette to the thousands of visitors to Mont Saint-Michel. For 150 francs, you enjoy your omelette and have the opportunity to pay homage to a gastronomic legend. Now, unlike the souffle omelette, the classic French omelette is only very briefly cooked and remain soft inside. It's called baveuse. That means creamy, if not runny. The yolks and the whites are only briefly blended. It's a simple technique after you've done a few. Now, you roll the omelette. Et voilà. The classic French omelette. A country variation is the flat omelette, full of vegetable. I'm cooking courgette and garlic here. It's not unlike the Spanish tortilla. It's easier than the classic omelette. It's healthier because it uses fewer eggs. And it's perfect when you have lots of people, whether you serve it hot or cold. I've got chopped garlic and grated courgettes cooking in butter and oil. This time, the eggs are beaten more vigorously. Add the cooked courgettes to the beaten eggs. I like to vary this omelette with leeks, chopped spinach, tomatoes, or onion. This mixture will cook gently, initially for at least four minutes. When the mixture has set and feels springy to the touch, Gently loosen the omelette around the edges. Like a tortilla, this omelette is turned over to cook briefly on the other side, just long enough to brown it. Two French omelettes. The farmlands surrounding Mont Saint-Michel are called Présalé, salt pastures. They provide grazing for sheep of the same name. Présalé lamb is an expensive delicacy because the flesh is so fragrant from the salty grass. Among sheep farmers like Daniel Galin, Roasting the meat is the favorite way to appreciate the flavor. After browning the meat all over, Daniel likes to cook his lamb by wrapping it in foil and then leaving it over a low fire for a good two hours. Allez, 
Although we French usually like to eat our lamb slightly pink in the middle, I found that these Normandy sheep farmers like it well done so that it almost falls off the bone. Flagellet or haricot beans are often served with presale lamb, but the Gala family prefers green beans. <laughs> As we're in Normandy, cider is found on every table. This one is made by Daniel's father and it lubricates yet another discussion about the European common agricultural policy. The CAP is an especially important topic in the town of Lessé, which holds a huge annual farming fair. The fair of Sainte Croix celebrates one of France's main assets, agriculture. In this region, almost 40% of the population still work on the land, and in this fair, it's where a farming family will trade animals, buy a tractor, or drink a glass of cider with all friends. Fairs on this side date from the 11th century, when they were said to have been created by Benedictine monks. And the fair of Sainte Croix became the date in the agricultural calendar. Even farm laborers could be found among the items to be traded. Now, of course, it's a social event and the food is a great attraction. Présalé, cooked on a spit, is even better than roasting it. <laughs> they do have the most disconcerting habit of making lamb sandwiches with the bone left in, though you can eat round it. On a hot summer's day, apple cider is fresh and thankfully low in alcohol. L'odeur de mon pays est dans une pomme. In Normandy, they say the fragrance of my country is in an apple. And the apple is the key to all the gastronomic pleasures of the region. The other Norman drink made from apples is Calvados. In the season, local stills, alambic, work day and night to produce this powerful spirit. The Calvados from this area, the verdant Valley d'Auge, is said to be the best in Normandy with its own appellation controlée. The older it is, the less it tastes of apple. It's also used widely in cooking. For example, this veal dish, escalope à la Valley d'Auge. Veal escalopes are first flattened, then sauteed in butter. To the pan juices, 
is added a staggering amount of crème fraîche, the rich, slightly sour cream. Normandy is famous for its luscious dairy products. Like Madame Camus, we'll think about dieting tomorrow. She then adds chopped parsley, a glass of Calvados distilled by a family. This one is five years old. And mushrooms sauteed in butter. She will reduce the sauce before pouring it over the veal. The essential ingredients of this dish are veal, cream, and calvados. But you can also accentuate the apple flavor by accompanying the dish with apple slices sauteed with yet more butter. It is said that the only sun which shines in Normandy is calvados. Its warmth can transform the normally shy Normans. This is a fifth generation of distillers and certain traditions are faithfully respected. Alors c'est à base de. Bah c'est le Calvados, bien sûr. Le Calvados. Oui, alors c'est le Calvados qu'on prend entre deux plats et qui trou, comme son nom l'indique, afin qu'on puisse continuer à. Il permet la suite. Alors ce Calvados, il a combien Je commence. Il a une cinquantaine d'années. Cinquantaine d'années. Le Calvados de qualité. Donc là, la couleur vient du fût. Tout à fait, oui. Oui, ce qu'on fait de plus en plus dans les restaurants maintenant, c'est de servir le trou normand en sorbet aux pommes. Oui. Vous êtes pour ou contre Oui, je sais qu'on fait ça de plus en plus. Vous euh, êtes plutôt contre Mais euh, oui, je pense que ce n'est pas tout à fait la, la, meilleure solution, la meilleure chose. C'est chambré qu'on va le boire. Oui, après. bien sûr, oui. Oui, il faut le boire à la, à la température de la pièce, à la température ambiante. Et euh, enfin, pour nous, ça nous paraît oui. dommage de, oui. de boire euh, quelque chose de froid. C'est et... la mode, mais ce n'est pas forcément. On trinque Avec plaisir. Votre santé Although it is absolutely sublime, I think I would still go for a little sorbet between courses than this which is divine, but so very, very powerful. This lovely woman, Marie Arel, is said to have invented Camembert. There are statues all over the country honoring great gastronomic figures, reminding us that cooks are as dear to our hearts and as essential to our way of living as poets, generals, or statesmen. Normandy is home to the best known of the pâte molle or soft crust cheeses like pavé d'orge, pont l'évêque, the pungent Livaro, and of course, Camembert. One of Marie Arel's descendant, Philippe Melon, carries on the cheese-making tradition. He knows what makes a good Camembert. Bon Camembert, il doit avoir une croûte finement striée, blanche, avec des pigmentations rougeâtres. Au toucher, il doit être souple, sans être trop mou. Pas coulant. Voilà. Au nez, il doit dégager un parfum de terroir. 
et il doit avoir un goût euh, puissant, intense, il doit être frité. For a camembert to receive an appellation contrôlée, it must be made with raw milk, lait cru, not pasteurized milk. Secondly, rennet must be used to coagulate the hot milk. Once the milk is set, it will be cut into small cubes. Thirdly, the milk curds must be moulé à la louche, put into molds by hand, an extremely arduous task. However, most camembert produced in Normandy is not appellation contrôlée. Camembert is extremely popular, and at the ULN dairy, it's made in vast quantities, 172,000 camembert per day. its particular crust and texture is penicillium, which is sprayed on the newly made cheese. And all camembert, industrial or handmade, is produced this way. In Normandy, everybody knows what a good camembert is all about. So, whether it's made on a traditional farm or in a factory, it's bound to be good. I'm a complete cheese addict, and I eat it at least twice a day. But I also use cheese in cooking, especially in one of the great classic, cheese souffle. Contrary to popular belief, it's a very simple dish to make once you've separated the eggs. I'm making a roux with two ounces of melted butter and two ounces of plain flour. Stir them together over medium heat for at least three minutes until the flour has cooked. Add 10 ounces of hot milk and stir vigorously to avoid lumps. It will thicken quite quickly. Season with salt and pepper. I always add a little freshly grated nutmeg to my cheese sauces. Remove from the heat and add the egg yolks. They need to be really thoroughly mixed in. The cheese I use is Gruyère, but you can use any strongly flavored cheese, like cheddar. Stir it in well. The mixture should be neither too loose nor too firm. Eggs are truly marvelous. They are complete food in themselves, and they can also transform so many other ingredients. For instance, in a souffle, the beaten egg white contain air bubble, which hold up the cheese and yolk mixture. To begin with, put a small amount of egg white to loosen the mixture. Then fold the rest in carefully. You should try to use a large metal spoon to get a good cutting and folding action. You want to break up as few of the air bubbles in the whites as possible. 
I like to add a little more grated cheese to give the souffle an interesting texture. Don't worry too much about any large blobs of egg white. What's important is to get the souffle into the oven quickly. The oven must be preheated so that the souffle cooks evenly. It cooks at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 25 to 30 minutes. You'll find that cheese souffles are less temperamental beasts than their daunting reputation might suggest. One of Normandy's most important fishing ports is Dieppe. <laughs> Across the bay from the town center is Le Pollet, the fisherman quarter. Although the fishing fleet has been reduced in number, the quartier still retains its working character. And the Virgin Mary still protects fishermen from the peril of the sea. When it comes to fish, the Dieppois are spoiled for choice. Of all the seafood delights found here, my favorite is the rich stew, la marmite Dieppoise. Monsieur Tossa poaches les poissons nobles, the expensive monkfish, sole, and brim, in fish broth until they are just firm. He then makes a roux with flour and melted butter. The liquid the fish has cooked in forms the base of the soup, along with the liqueur from the mussels. The cooking term, à la diepoise, usually denotes a dish cooked with cream. Again, the slightly sour crème fraîche. After all, we are in Normandy. Dieppe used to be one of the ports along the spice route, and this is reflected in the use of eastern spices, ground fennel, cayenne, paprika, and curry powder. Just before serving, the fish and mussels will go back into the broth to be heated through. A good starter is a traditional herring salad, la poltaise, named after Dieppe's fisherman's quarter. Its lightness complements the rich marmite diepoise. Et de toute façon, je pense qu'il va nous ramasser les pommes. Chérie, s'il te plaît, tu peux pas s'occuper de ton... Monique Pia has apples on her doorstep for one of the most marvelous apple tarts I have ever tasted. Il en faut une douzaine, non Combien il en faut Il en faut plus d'une douzaine. Il en faut à peu près une vingtaine. Disons une bonne vingtaine. Une bonne vingtaine, surtout qu'elles vont être debout sur la tarte. Ce sont les premières pommes, ce sont les pommes d'été. Ah, voilà. Et on les prend directement sur l'arbre parce qu'elles sont légèrement acidulées. Et la pâte n'en sera que meilleure parce qu'elles sont légèrement acidulées. C'est ça, elles ne sont pas voilà. trop douces et elles ne s'effritent pas. Quoi. Elles ne s'effritent oui. pas, elles se cassent pas. Vous avez de la chance, ça, là. Voilà. voilà est ah. belle. Voici, par exemple, celle-là. Oui, elle est belle. Elle est très belle, elle est très rouge. Hein Alors, surtout, couper les pommes dont on fait. Quatre quartiers et on les coupe droit, bien, bien droit, bien droit. Pour voilà. qu'elles tiennent, qu'elles tiennent bien droite dans la 
dans la pâte, et sur ça. la pâte. Parce que dans le fond, elles sont perpendiculaires au, à la pâte. Hein. Exactement. Elles viennent comme des petits soldats. Exactement. Donc, Donc là, Evelyne, elle a mis son beurre qui est un beurre doux. C'est un beurre doux qui est à la température qui de la dur, pièce. Qui n'est pas dur. Hein? Oui, pas dur. Température de la pièce. Et Evelyne, qu'est-ce que vous avez mis De la farine du sel Oui, je mets la farine du sel dessus. Oui. Et le morceau de beurre. Et puis moi je pense qu'on va peut-être aller voir un petit cidre dans le jardin. Bah, c'est une bonne décision. Voilà, c'est une bonne idée. Et on se met Mais Evelyne Voilà. Courage Evelyne, hein? on pensera à vous. Voilà. Euh, on vous amènera la... un verre, mais après. Après. La pâte. Courage. Après la pâte. Tenez. On y va Oui, mais on, on garde les tabliers. Hein? Oui. Evelyne has a tremendously light hand with a pastry. She rolls it out slightly bigger than the pie dish and then manages to fold it over without it sticking to the surface. <laughs> Meanwhile, Evelyn has lined up the apple chunks like little soldiers. The sweetness of the tart depends on the apples. Very little sugar is necessary. For me, Monique's tarte aux pommes is the very embodiment of the simplicity and quality of Norman food. But I still want to get to grips with the elusive and discreet charm which is the Norman character. Perhaps a little more cider is needed to loosen the tongue and warm the heart. D'ailleurs, toute la France croit qu'en fait, le normand n'arrive jamais à se décider. Et d'ailleurs, on rit souvent d'une façon de dire à mon produit normand qui dit toujours peut-être ben que oui, peut-être ben que non. Hein? Mais c'est Il ne dit pas ni oui ni non. C'est toujours un peut-être oui, peut-être non. Mais ça, c'est pas ce que je la génère. Alors, on peut dire que le normand, c'est un viking féroce. C'est un bon bourgeois caché dans son bocage qui mange bien, qui boit bien. Et c'est celui qui a inventé le frisson nouveau avec... Je traque avec Monique, ma compagne de la oh, ouais.